Welcome back, modelers. So today I've got a little bit of a experiment slash methodology, whatever you want to call it today. We're going to have a bunch of techniques that we're going to look at. So one, we're going to look at painting this scheme on my Tamiya Spitfire. And I'm going to show you a few different things that I do with modeling where we're going to use these scotch pads to kind of add some tonal variety to it. So that's going to be part of it. Then the next thing that we're going to get into is I'm going to use this detail shine enhancer thing. And I'm going to do some more experiments with chipping and try to use this as a method for pretty much chipping whatever you need at that point. So I've already got my Spitfire here, black based, oh, well, black primed, I guess you could say at this point. And I've got some certain areas of focus in the, uh, in kind of a, I think this was dark aluminum Vallejo that I was playing with, but, but I also did a bit of polished metal, um, mid colors to do that. So first we're going to do the azure blue on the bottom and we're going to do some different tonal variety techniques to get that going. And so I'm going to start out here with doing some white to kind of give a little bit of contrast. I'm also going to use some blue. So let's get to it. Now, I already have some white in my cup ready to go. And then I'm going to probably try to that a little bit further out. So what I did is I grabbed a scotch pad. Make sure you get all the hair out of it. That's kind of nasty. And as you can see, it's kind of transparent in a way. There's just a little bit that's blocking. That's kind of what we want. So, and with this video, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put like a table of contents into the description. So if there's a certain technique that you're actually looking for, and that's the only reason you're watching kind of thing, you can skip right to it. I won't be offended. And so we'll get in there. So what I'm going to do is I've got this kind of torn apart scotch pad and I'm going to put that just over in areas. And then when you paint over, you can see there's just kind of a hint of what's left there. So it can get in a little closer. And then I'm just going to use this pad until it's just too saturated. And then move on to maybe, and then some of these are gonna have its own pattern. I think this one might be eh, a little thick. So you can kind of switch in between them. And just, we're giving it just some variety in there. Cause once we put on the blue, all of that is going to just kind of poke through and there's going to be some brighter areas and there's going to be some lighter. Put this there. Okay, some there. And there's not exactly <laughs> method to the madness. I'm just going through fairly random. Some of this stuff, like I wasn't even planning on making it look exactly like that, but that's just a little bit of a, you could say, a happy accident, right? So. All right, so now we've done that, but I want to add some more fine-tuned squiggles. So I'm going to have the 
airbrush pretty close and just kind of make some squiggles in the gaps. Okay, so that's that, and I'm curious to see what that looks like in like double speed. It's gotta be pretty crazy, because yes, I was just going haphazard crazy, just not trying to look for a specific pattern or anything, just trying to create some variety going on below, so. Yeah, so I think I've got all the spots that I want to get to. So next, I'm going to switch to blue. All right, so I just got some uh, Tamiya Blue X4. I'm just gonna be putting in there. And I'm gonna try to keep it specifically to the panel lines and try to give that a little bit of in interest.
So there's that color down. So you can see that should add some nice variety. I want to put that all down. I need to add a little here. All right, so now for the fun part, I'm gonna put on, first we're gonna get into the chipping fluid and then we're gonna get into the uh, Azure. Okay, so now for the fun part, we need to put some chipping material to let that paint just kind of have a weak bond to the paint below. And I've added in a clear coat over that to just kind of make sure that we don't go too far through. But just wipe this AK decal detail shine enhancer over these leading edges here. And you want it to be that it's, you can't, uh, can't even tell that it's still there. So just enough that the paint's gonna have a little bit of a harder time to bite, and that's about it. So make sure there's no big wax clumps or something. Because on the leading edges, we're gonna be more of, you know, little scrapes, impacts as it's flying through the air. So we're gonna be using something to replicate that a little bit better. And then now for the top parts. Ooh, that's a lot of gunk. Okay. So just wipe it on. And the cool thing with this is you can kind of play with it to be, if it's really thick, then of course the paint is just not gonna stick at all. But really thin, you can kind of work with it. So like right through there, I'll just come, obviously just gonna rip right off. So I'm gonna come back over that. Make sure it's not so gunky. Do a few bits there. I just work it in. Okay. We'll let that out. And then this port side, I'm gonna have a bit more chipped because that's where they're coming in and out of. The other side just has people coming in and helping with a seat belt or whatever. So, All right, so now I'll take the other side that's nice and clean. And we're gonna re just try to remove as much as we can, depending on how just what we want. Like these gun ports, we don't wanna have like gigantic chips coming off. Maybe some of you do, but I don't particularly. Okay, and just take off this. I'm like gonna have to get a new Q-tip. So I like these type that I got from t Target. Come in a variety pack. For certain applications like this, where one's pointed and the other's flat. And I don't know what the actual beauty reason for having something like that is, but for modeling, it works pretty dang cool. All right, so just looking in the light, making sure Anything, just gigantic clump kind of thing. Okay. All right. Did I miss any part? All right. I'm going to consider that good. So now I'm going to paint on the Azure. 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 
I don't know. We got this pretty dang thin with a leveling thinner. So hopefully didn't make it too thin. I think that's actually going to work pretty well. And this is where you want to be patient. If you have it too thick, coverage is going to be great, but you might cover up all the work that you just did. So with it very thin, go slow, and you're just starting to erase what you just did.
All right, so there's that for the bottom. And you can see, got some good variety. Some of it is gonna get lost when we start doing some of the other stuff with with uh, weathering. So um, it, it just like with armor, sometimes if it's looking a little bit too stark right now, that's actually okay. A lot of this is going to get kind of, it'll disappear eventually, right? So I'll be to be expected. It looks like, oh, I forgot, I need to do the wheel wells. So I'm gonna do that. Um, but beyond there, it's looking pretty good. And if needed, I can always come back and just add even more variety to it and go from there. But you can see how I picked out some certain panels. The white kind of made certain panels pop where I had them underneath. You can see that some of it probably is going to get lost in some of the oil streaks that's going to happen underneath there, unfortunately. But otherwise, it's coming together famously. So, I'm going to next flip this around, and we're going to get to the bottom, I mean the top, and we're going to go in with uh, the Middle Stone and Dark Earth. The photo that I have with this is showing that it's uh, pretty faded and stuff, so we're going to add some interesting contrasty stuff, and um, with the chipping, I'm probably going to use more of a post shading technique. And so we're going to have some fun with the top. All right, so that's done. Now what I'm gonna do, it's just a teeny bit of white. Ooh, probably too much. And we're gonna do some post shading. Now it looks like I'm probably gonna have to come back and do some touch ups, but whatever, do that later. So once again, I'm using this scotch pad. Actually, there we go.
All right, so we've got some good variety going on with that. So I am going to do basically the same thing, but I'm not going to bore you guys. I'm going to go with the dark earth and just do that on my own. Come back and then I'm going to show you how to chip this stuff off. All right, everyone. So you can see, finished up with the paint job. So now for the fun part, we're going to get to chipping. Now some of it I've accidentally bumped into a few things and it's already started to chip. So we've had some fun there. But if we take a look at these edges here, let's see if we can get some better light on it. But if we look at the paint edges, here we go. So the edge, leading edge, should be getting a little bit of scrape. So I'm gonna just grab some toothpick and I'm just acting like a piece of debris that's actually hitting it. And running in through a few bits there. And focus properly but there we go we got some little strikes going on to it the other thing we can do let's see so I've got a just a fiber grass fiber glass that's a tongue twister brush and I should probably clean up the edge off this a bit And so we can also create a little bit of abrasion in certain areas. But I think what we're looking for is a little bit more. And I might have to go in and get a little better paint coverage in that area as it's a little bit thin. But. Here we got some good coverage. And so then just kind of hitting it. You can see some of the strikes that it's kind of creating. And it's working out all right. Might have to clean up some of those edges too, but so there's that. And then the fun part, some of this might lift up really easy with the walkway. So right here, I'm gonna have quite a bit. And if you look just lightly with this, just having it come up. Because in some of these areas, I put it a little bit too thick. Now, for some people, we might just leave it as such right there, but I want a little bit more. And then we want to get a little bit of abrasion to it, so. Fiberglass pencil, brush. One of these days, I'll get that right. And with some of this, I'm going to take a thousand grit sandpaper and just kind of create some abrasion going on. Make those areas a little bit more buffed. Okay, a little there. Okay, and we're starting to get what we are aiming for. Want to make it look like somebody walked there, not a chunk of sandpaper sponge 
hit it. So you can get toothpick. Just try to get right in the crevices. Get a little bit. Okay, I think on that surface, I'm going to leave it just like that. Sorry, it's been such a challenge keeping this all on frame. Okay, so I'm going to just lightly Scrub at this root. Should have done a better job at checking to make sure. The wax wasn't too thick because right there you can see it was a little bit too thick and it just came off too much. Probably going to have to come back with that and just spray over it. Touch that up a little. So, so far I like the effect, whether this is better than going with like hairspray, not 100% sure, but Definitely a different effect and I want to say less user error, but I don't know yet about that yet. You can see that the sandpaper is probably my favorite. So what's happening around these areas is more of an abrasion, right? So, fits the part. Ooh, that's starting to look good. So, in this area, that area, actually, I still got some paint. Let's clean that up right now. Erase some of that, come back to there. Looking pretty good. I think. There. Uh, I don't know. It's, I think that's, that's doing pretty good. So now with this side, I want it to be less. So it can be kind of der delicate. Like I said, there's less happening on that side. Emphasize some wear and tear in that area. Give some abrasion. Now it's looking pretty good. I like how the cap this is capable of doing really fine chips. You can see there. That's kind of what I want to go after this area where it's it's getting use, but it's not as crazy as on the other side. So I'll probably just keep that right like so. Okay. Now, before we come back to there, also the ammo access areas. And I put too much goop on there, so hopefully it doesn't look too bad. I just want to get a couple corners with it. I don't want to do a whole lot. 
a lot of the pictures I've looked at there, they're actually not too bad. I can imagine that part there. Coming into contact with some people. Yeah, so just something kind of like that. And then for the machine guns. Just, you know, that's about as much as I'll do on there. And actually that one I shouldn't be doing because, let's see, yeah, I'm going to have my insignia there. So I should actually come back to that later. Okay, and I think I'm going to actually do this part. I don't know, I think that part's probably not too accurate of having a major chip like that there because I'm trying to think of the story of where that would happen. How would that happen? And mm, don't know. like that okay now I did a teeny bit fuel filler just to get kind of around the edges something like that that's about all I care for that okay maybe Sandpaper to the edges, just I don't want it to do too much of like an abrasion, so you can see it kind of just doing it on its edge. Give it a little bit of a sharp line. Okay, now to fix some things with this. I'll we'll leave that like so, and then I want some small, small itty bitty chips. I want to make those chips look like it's you know coming off and not but big chunks or anything. It's just where it's got the most wear and then you got some abrasion going on around it and i think you know this trailing edge get some love there okay i want to do something with this because that just looks a little bit too uniform that is good. Maybe with this, you can see it looks a little bit too synthetic, I guess would maybe be the right word. I don't want it to look like something made in the lab. We want it to look organic, right? So that's pretty good. So I think I might call it. I've got to remember, though, I think I put... One suggestion that I probably should have, that is probably looking at um, taking a picture of where you put the, the metal beforehand because I'm trying to remember all the different parts. Oh, there was here. We want to give it some interest. Got some of these foot probably going right there. Give it 
some abrasion. Okay. And that's where we're at. So I think it's going pretty well. Uh, what I always do is I'm going to put this into like the critique group and see if the hive mind can tell me what they think about the chips and if I want to come back and reanalyze some of those chips and make them a little different. But I don't know. I th I'm going to look also at my book. Try to look at some of these chipping. I mean, this is for some of them maybe a little bit extreme, but you have to realize where they were in theater Tunisia, the Mediterranean, and, uh, and eventually Italy. So I think this particular one, let's see, yeah, this is in Italy, but I believe it first started out in Tunisia. I'd have to look. The book doesn't reference that particular squadron too well. So anyway, um, yeah, I think that is something that I will be able to sleep tonight. So um, I'll have some follow-up with this. In next video, we're going to be looking at the stencils that I made for this. So I'm going to put in just kind of a protective coat once I know, yeah, I think this looks to my liking kind of thing. So once I have that set up and um, then we're going to go and do the stencils and paint all the, sense, the stencils with it. I think I'm probably only going to use uh, maybe a couple little stencils, but like I think just one picture. Everything else on here I've made on the silhouette and going to be using that to paint up. So thanks for sticking around the whole time. If you guys watched the whole entire thing, you are amazing. And until next time.